So while it's BC Mun 2018, thank you very much for this wonderful conference. Um, to start off, I would like to introduce the mayor of Coquitlam. Um, yeah. Richard. Richard. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much. It's always an honor to be able to join in one of these events, uh, partly because of how wonderful it is to see young people engaged in making the world better. Today, you undoubtedly debated, this weekend, you undoubtedly debated a whole bunch of issues that most young people aren't thinking about that much. They certainly aren't thinking about the detail that goes into legislation, into resolutions, into the kinds of work you've been doing here. So because of that, I always accept when I'm invited to speak to a model United Nations, a model parliament, a model legislature, a model city council. Each one of those engages people in the work that I passionately love. I passionately love public policy. I passionately don't love politics. Politics isn't necessarily public policy. It's certainly one of the ways that we achieve it. But to, today, I heard the voices around the table that we're trying to find consensus on something insignificant, but public policy is about trying to find those moments of consensus where we can get people with disparate points of view to agree. I had, uh, over my career, I worked with, I worked as a consultant uh, much of my career, and much of that was spent with governments, that's provincial governments, federal governments, local government, regional government governments in other countries, other jurisdictions. And I must say that through that work, I got to see how government can work, how parliament can work, how United Nations can work to better the world. Um, this is essentially a parliament. Uh, it comes from the French word parlement, uh, parle, to speak. So it's a place where we get to speak, where we get to speak our mind, where we get to debate issues. I worked in the Legislative Assembly in, in Victoria in the 37th Parliament from 2001 to 2005. But I worked before that in governments, and I worked after that in local government as a councillor and then as mayor for the past decade. And I've always tried to foster in those assemblies, particularly at local government, at city council as an assembly, foster the idea that we can all get together, we can set aside the fact that we might have different political perspectives on something, and we can come to a consensus. And we do. The Coquitlam City Council votes unanimously about more than 90% of the time. That is, every now and then we actually have to count the votes, but it's typically fewer than one vote in 10 where I don't conclude it with those, those all in favor, all opposed, the motion carries unanimously. And that's typically because we work so hard to set aside political differences, to set aside the realities that the, the people, the political processes that got us there are no longer important when we're in an assembly. When we're at the table, what's important is good public policy. What's important is, who are we working for? Are we working for special interests, or are we working actually for a better world? And I think almost everybody that I've ever met in local government, in provincial government, in federal government, has worked hard for a better world. Now, they take different perspectives, they take different attitudes, they may have a different political philosophy than I do. But almost everybody that I work with, and almost everybody that I've worked with over many years in government has had a passionate, passionate belief in their community, passionate interest in trying to make their community a better place. 
And there's no reason in the world why a group of young people on such a beautiful weekend would spend it in a room like this unless they were trying to make the world a better place, trying to move forward their ability to change our world. And our world needs changing. Our world has never perhaps needed changing more than it does today. Today we're faced with enormous crises that put the world at risk. And that's been the case since the nuclear bomb was, the atomic bomb back then was developed, where the world was possibly at risk. The world was at risk by decisions we make. And today the world is at risk for a bunch of other reasons. And a lot of it is related to climate change, the reality is that we are changing this planet faster than the planet can fix our damage. But it's also because we don't, we're not talking as much. We're letting sometimes extremist politics take over. Whether it's, it's extremism in a religious sect in, in some other part of the world or locally, or it's an extremism in American politics, or I'll say it. Um, we now have uh, politics in the United States that is incredibly divisive. It isn't at all aimed at trying to find a consensus. It isn't at all aimed at trying to do what's best for everybody. It's aimed at trying to win. And that doesn't work. The, the United Nations doesn't work if everybody's in there to win. United Way Nations work is if all the nations get together in a way that is united and try to find solutions that benefit everybody. So I take my hat off to, to you folks, because I see around this table leaders of our future, the leaders that will take over and will make the world a better place. I see leaders in your chair. Now, most, a lot of you are saying, well, I'm not there yet, but you're far advanced from what I can see far advanced beyond so many of our electorate, so many of those who can vote today don't. So many of those who can vote today can't because they aren't capable, they don't have the knowledge it would take to cast an informed ballot. I have a debate regularly with a, several people I know are from Australia, and in Australia you're required to vote. It's, it's the law. You get fined if you don't vote. And I have always been opposed to that idea. Unfortunately, in Australia, they get much better voter turnout, partly because of that, than we get in Canada. In the local government elections, we get about one voter in four who will take the time to vote in a city council election for the city council and for school board. One in four, 25 percent. Provincial, it's closer to 50%, federal it's higher, it's sometimes 70%. But that means that at the best of those, one voter in three is staying home. One voter in three isn't engaged. One voter in three doesn't feel like voting is something they have to do. So the debate I have with folks who talk about, let's find them. If the, Let's make them want to vote. Let's make them cast a ballot whether they're ready to or not. And I think that would be worse. It would be making a bunch of people who don't feel like they know anything about anything, just going in there to mark a ballot, just wreck the, spoil the ballot, and, um, and then step out and say, well, I avoided the fine. I voted because it's my duty. No, vote because it's your right and be in government, participate in our civic institutions because it's your right. I often tell a story about the first time I took on uh, elected office. I was going to run for office and back then I, I was before I was injured and so I was, I was able to door knock a lot. You could go up to a door and knock on the door and perhaps even back then people answered the door. But uh, this fellow answered the door with a thick Eastern European accent. I would say Czechoslovakia, Hungary, not sure where. Thick accent. And he, when he realized why I was there, he 
talked about it. He got angry, actually, not at me. But he said that most of his neighbors weren't going to vote. And he was angry at that. And he said in his thick Eastern European accent, he said, I left everything I had. I left family and career and everything I owned. And I traveled across the world so that I could be in a place, so that I could live in a place, I could come to a place where I could vote. And I want you all to believe that how passionately, believe passionately how valuable that vote is, how necessary democracy is to our future. In institutions like the United Nations, institutions like the democratically elected governments, are really, really important. And they often get denigrated. They often get put down by those who will say something like every politician is in it for their own. Every politician lies. Every politician doesn't care. They only care about themselves. And um, I urge you to be part of it, to get to know the people that are running for office and choose wisely, and then work with government, even if it's not the government you were trying for. But work with government to try to make change, to, to advance public policy. Uh, some of the, so I'm of one political stripe. Some people paint me as only that, and yet I have had better success working with the other side of the spectrum um, on public policy issues, largely perhaps because they're surprised that um, I believe that we can set aside the partisan reality set aside the politics, and we can actually work together. So I take my hat off to this group. I wish I could have spent the weekend here listening to the, to the debate, to the resolutions, to the work you did. I will always accept an invitation to a model United Nations, a model parliament, a model legislature. Ravi says I always do, and I always do willingly. Not necessarily. Sometimes Ravi just pushes me. It makes me do something I wasn't sure I wanted to do. But you make me feel that, that you're doing with me. <laughs> so that's your smartness. But, but with this, absolutely. This is really important stuff. And it just makes me so proud to, to know that uh, there's a group of future leaders who spent their weekend working hard on stuff that so you, some of you won't talk to your friends about it on, on tomorrow. But I hope, I hope all of you do, because everyone needs to know that the work that took place here is really important, and that the work that takes place in democratically elected institutions and assemblies <coughs> like this is really important to our future as a country, as a, as a planet. We have big issues to solve, and unfortunately, my generation is going to fail to solve them. We're not going to do it. We're going to make more problems, I think, than we solve. We're going to leave you, unfortunately, I believe, we'll leave you with a planet that isn't as good as the one we took on when we were born. I admit it. I wish we could. I wish I could say otherwise. So we hand you the torch. Make this planet better. Do what you can to make democratic institutions better, and make Canada better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Annual Youth Leadership Society of BC Mall UN Conference. Over the course of today, the Secretariat team and I have heard productive debate and discussions taking place, and we are so pleased by the level and quality of diplomacy, compromise, and professionalism you have exhibited. While I'm sure you have all experienced some obstacles in finding solutions or encouraging other member states to take up your position, 
I am confident that you were able to learn from such experiences and effectively improve your skills and understanding of global compromise. From simply observing debate, I can attest to the vast improvement that was made in every delegate today. And importantly, I am proud to assert that the leadership that you have practiced today will not stay confined within these walls. This means that your resolution and official documents that have arose from this conference will be sent to officials in positions within office, and we will do our best to hold accountability in their actions using your recommendations. As a result, we hope to keep you updated on the progress of your hard work today and its ability to influence officials at various levels of government. I would also like to use this platform today to also thank our very many sponsors for their contributions. Thank you to Mr. James Brake, North American and Pacific Cellular Services, Dr. Atul and Poonam Nanda, Steps Together Foundation, Fostering Debate Talent Academy, and the Youth Leadership Society of BC for hosting this conference for us. We, the Secretariat of Wireless BC Mun, would like to extend a sincere thank you to Ravi Safaya for his mentorship and guidance throughout the process of organizing this conference. He truly made our vision for this conference a reality. Thank you so much, Uncle Ravi, for putting in so much effort in allowing us youth to succeed in our aspirations. Please accept our small token of thanks. Wow. Really? <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Thank you so much. Unexpected gift. <laughs> While today was very productive and inspirational, it is only a stepping stone for a lifetime of being a leader who fosters diplomacy. I challenge you today to incorporate some of your experiences from today in inspiring audiences and addressing a deficit in the world. I sincerely believe you can use the tools from today to apply it into your life in reaching new heights and influencing positive change. But now, without further ado, the presentation of awards by our director, Brandon Wu. Um, so before that, I'd just like to give a quick speech. So, while SVC Month was quite the experience, I've never experienced such a unique committee in such a unique environment. <laughs> Many years ago, I was also a very scared young delegate, just like you guys, and at my very first conference, I only said one thing, and that was money laundering was bad. As you may know, that was a very obvious statement. Years later, seeing you guys with all the progress that you've made in this one conference, it really warmed my heart. I do believe that you guys will become the change that we want to see in the world. And for those of you who were not able to speak as much as you would like to today, I do encourage you to find more diplomatic solutions and to continue pursuing the activity of Model UN. Now, without further ado, I will announce awards. So, beginning with the Position Paper Award. The Position Paper Award is given to a delegate who have researched immensely and are greatly knowledgeable about the topic at hand. It is given to Shoya Lamba from Mexico and Eugene Zhang from China. Furthermore, Eugene Zhang also receives the Honorary Secretary Award, which is given to delegates who have registered three or more of their colleagues and encourage them to pursue the, sport, or the activity of the Model UN. Eugene? Okay. So, the Honorable Mention Award is given to those delegates who have truly succeeded today in today's conference, however, just lack that little bit of professionalism or research to become truly outstanding. So, now I'd like to present the award to Ekam Karl from er, representing the delegation of Japan, Jiao Riang representing the delegation of Argentina, and Athena Yu representing the delegation of Albania. <laughs> Furthermore, Athena Yu also receives the Honorary Secretary Award. Mm -hmm. Delegates who stand in the order they were called up. Oh, so, so. Okay. So, Ekam, yeah. Gerald, and Athena. Thank you. Okay. 
So now we'll be presenting the Outstanding Delegate Award. So this award is for delegates who have truly displayed excellent leadership and research and are truly knowledgeable delegates at heart. So, Jyotsna Kumar from the United Kingdom and Himaja Makala representing Canada. Please come up. Himaja Makala also received the Honorary Secretary Award. And finally, the Best Delegate Award. The Best Delegate Award goes to the, to the delegate who has catalyzed our conversations and has been well researched throughout the conference. As it may come to the surprise of some of you, Singapore, or Siddharth Kanakai. Give a round of applause to all of our award winners.